Hi guys, uh, we're talking about ingredients and what they're good for and whether or not you can substitute them. So the purpose of this video is to talk about sweet or sugary ingredients that you can work with. And we're going to start with our dry sugars and then we're going to work move on down to our wets. So the very first sugar that I'm going to talk about is your plain old ordinary table sugar. This is what you put in your coffee, uh, put in your tea, and this is what we normally bake with. And uh, you know, it gets a little lumps and clumps there, no biggie because you just sort of give it a good smush and it works out. So when we talk about sugar, this is what we're talking about, just plain old regular sugar. Now the next sugar we have is called Demerara sugar or raw sugar, and these crystals are a whole lot thicker and uh, as you can see it's brown, it hasn't been quite as refined. And um, this is not as good for baking because it doesn't dissolve as quickly and so it's not going to distribute well with the rest of your ingredients. This is a really good sugar to put on top of finished baked goods because, again, since it doesn't dissolve when it comes out of the oven, instead of being all melted, it'll look all pretty and it gives it a nice polished restaurant or bakery quality finish. So raw sugar, demerara sugar. Well, Raw sugar is unrefined sugar. Demerara sugar is white sugar that's been more refined but still has the big crystals. So that's a little bit different. But anytime you want to just put a sugar sprinkle on top that's not going to dissolve or melt when you're baking, these big sugar crystals are the way to go. The next sugar that we've got is brown sugar. And you do need to be careful about measuring brown sugar because brown sugar actually has a lot of space in between it and you can really pack it down. So brown sugar, when you measure brown sugar, don't just put it into the cup. Take your fingers, a spoon, or even the next smaller size uh, measuring cup and pack it down and make sure that it is packed all the way down before and then level to the surface of whatever it is you're measuring. Now brown sugar is basically this sugar that hasn't been quite as refined or this sugar that hasn't been quite as refined and so now it's just a little bit more and it is brown sugar is a little bit of this sugar with a little bit of molasses built into it so and it's going to give it a little bit of a different flavor it's got a little bit of a different melt point but if you need to substitute brown sugar for white sugar you can just remember that the brown sugar uh, because it's measured more densely you really want to take off maybe a third of the total sugar volume uh, and also you want to make sure that it's going to give it a little different flavor, almost a caramel undertone. This last one here is powdered sugar, and uh, when you mess with it a lot, it sort of like flies in the air. It's almost like it's got static cling, and this is actually white sugar that has literally been ground to a powder, and then they're going to add cornstarch to it, and you can bake with it, but you can't substitute this sugar for white sugar or the finishing sugar or the brown sugar because the cornstarch and the smaller flakes that are in here make it different. So this is a good cookie if it starts with powdered sugar. Uh, the Mexican wedding cakes with polvorones, um, you know, start with the powdered sugar, you roll in it. It's a lovely finishing sugar. If you take cookies that are warm and you roll it in, it gives it a nice white little coat. So these are all different sugars. And again, you don't really want to substitute one for the other unless you're in a desperate pinch. Now, this last container of dry sugar here is called pure cane sugar. All of these different types of sugars may or may not have started from a sugar cane. You can get sugar from beets, you can get sugar from carrots, you can get sugar from bamboo, you can get it from a variety of sources. But cane sugar is specifically from a plant called sugar cane, and it's got a different melt point than the other sugars. So if something calls for cane sugar, don't substitute one of these. They're going to melt earlier, and you're not going to get the finished product. I make marshmallows from scratch. They are very different than the ones you get in the bag. And I have to use the cane sugar because I can't guarantee that the beet sugar or carrot sugar will give me quite the same melt point. So if it says cane sugar, make sure that you've checked it. Uh, this one particularly says it right really loud on the package and they charge you for it. But uh, some of them, if you just read the back, it says made from cane sugar. Read all the ingredients because if it's mixed in with beet sugar or carrot sugar, again, it's gonna change that melting point. So that's our dry sugars. 
Then the last dry sugar that we have is called a sanding sugar. And these are the pretty ones. These are just the sugar sprinkles. And when you uh, shake them out there, you've got that nice pretty little colors in them. They come in all kinds of colors. So what happens if you desperately need a color of sugar that you don't happen to have? Well, you cheat. You take plain old regular white sugar and you add some of the food coloring that you want it to be and you can actually color your own sugar any color you want. Just make sure that you don't add too much food coloring because you want to dye it, not dissolve it. So you can actually make sanding or finishing sugar of any color using a basic coloring set and regular table sugar. You cannot dye the powdered sugar like that. It will die and you can turn it you know pinks and reds and greens and the whole bit but it never turns into sanding sugar. It just gets runnier and runnier and if you put enough liquid food dye in there basically you just make up like a paste. There's no point in trying to dry the brown sugar. It's already got such a deep coat on it. It doesn't change the colors and as far as the sanding sugar here again because it's brown it's not going to absorb the color and because of the large crystals it doesn't dye evenly anyhow. So if you want uh, the uh, finishing sugar, it's going to come in this raw sugar. It's going to come in a white demerara shape, which is going to be large and crystallized, but it's going to be this color. So those are your dry sugars. Again, the cane sugar, if your recipe specifically calls for cane sugar, please don't substitute something else. You will burn your recipe and cry in tears. Now we go on to our liquid sugars. We are, of course, familiar with honey, and it's cute and a little bear. There is something called agave here. There is molasses and there is K-Roll corn syrup. Now I'm only using natural, natural sweeteners here. If you want to cook with things like equal, stevia, or sweet and low and things like that, you have to have a recipe specifically designed for them. Artificial sugars are not substitutable for real sugars unless you know exactly what you're doing. So if you're going to use that, um, uh, artificial sugars. Make sure you get a recipe for them. There is one product on the market uh, that is supposed to be uh, the Splenda and you can substitute that for any baking recipe one to one and make your baked goods and I've tried it and I'm diabetic and I thought woohoo I'll be able to eat baked goods because I'll have fake sugars and no. It did not work as well. You still need to do some uh, recipe adjusting for it, and frankly, it didn't work for me. So I've got all of my liquid sugars here. If it calls for molasses, it's because it wants the particular flavor. Can I substitute corn syrup for molasses? Why, yes, I can. Won't get the flavor, but it'll still be okay to cook. Can I substitute honey for molasses? Why, yes, I can. It'll be a different flavor, but again, I'll be able to cook. And all of these are on a one-to-one -one basis. But when we come to the agave, even though it is a liquid, it has a much sweeter taste point than any of these liquids. So you really only put half of the agave that it calls for the liquid, which means that your recipe is short on liquid. So you can either A, add a little bit more water and a little bit more milk or my favorite trick is to add an extra egg instead because the egg volume is going to cook itself and you're not going to worry about having mushy food. So let's go over this again. White table sugar, good for baking and putting in your coffee and tea. Raw sugar, uh, when it's totally refined, it's demerara sugar. Good for sprinkling on top of baked goods before you bake them so that they look really pretty. Or if you put a little glaze on them and sprinkle them, it looks pretty on top. Brown sugar, this is what gives chocolate chip cookies their actual delicious flavor. And again, when you cook with it, it uh, really needs to be packed down hard into the cooking measuring thing. And your powdered sugar, which is an animal all on its own. You cannot substitute powdered sugar for any of these things. And then we have our sanding sugar here, which is basically just regular table sugar that somebody put food dye in. So do you want to pay a small fortune for it, or do you want to just dye it yourself? You can do that. Save lots of money. Corn syrup, molasses, honey, 
All of these liquids are interchangeable one-on-one. -on -one. It will change the flavor of your baked goods. Honey's got a distinctive flavor. Molasses has a distinctive flavor. And Cairo corn syrup has a distinctive flavor. And I might want to warn you, for those of you who have never tasted molasses before, don't put a spoonful of it in your mouth. It will make you gag. It tastes great in baked things. It tastes terrible as a spoonful. Cairo corn syrup, you'll you know, have a mouthful of sugar, but it's not going to make you gag. And honey, of course, you know, we can eat by the spoonful, but we don't because, well, that's just so wrong. <coughs> and then the agave, if you're going to use that, use half of the liquid agave that it calls for for any of these and make sure that you replace the liquid with something else. And that's it. That's our sugar display. Sweet baking.